Well, folks, I've done something that uh, I've been thinking about doing for a little while. I've seen some examples of it on the internet. Credit to everyone who did this before me. I'm not claiming I invented this idea. Uh, but the idea is to do a, a sticky arming switch on my Tyrannus. Um, so let me show you how that works. What does that mean? What it means is, here, let's take a look. I don't have a copter right here, but if you take a look right here, that's my arming channel, and it's currently in the disarmed state, and I do switch arming, so normally I would flip a switch and it would arm. But instead, now I flip the switch, and I'm in the sort of, you know, the ready-to-arm position, and then I hold the momentary switch, and then it arms. Why did I do that? Well, of course, a lot of people stick arm, and I don't like stick arming. I like the fact that switch arming gives me a positive tactile way of knowing whether the copter is armed. It's not something I have to remember or think about. But what I don't like about it is that it is easy to accidentally flip that switch and arm the copter. Uh, and in fact, I did that once. I, I picked up the copter after a crash and I was carrying it back to the flight station and I did not unplug the battery. And I, this was hanging from the neck strap and I bumped the switch and it armed. I was okay. But it scared the bejesus out of me and ever since then, what I've done, and this is a little tip for you if you do do switch arming, is every time I disarm the copter, I raise the throttle just a little. And when the throttle is raised, then you can flip that switch all day long, and Clean Flight will not let the copter arm until the throttle is at zero. But there's a problem with that, and here's the problem. If I flip the switch and the throttle is raised, Clean Flight will not arm the copter. Good, but it's like it's a ticking time bomb. As soon as you lower the throttle, the copter immediately arms. At least it used to be that way. I think it still is. And if it's not, someone in the comments will correct me. It's not good though. Okay, so that sticky arming switch fixes that. It means that if I flip this switch, the copter will not arm by accident. And I can accidentally tweedle this all day long. And it's only when I actually hold it, well, now the copter's on. And I think this is pretty cool. This sort of gives you all the advantages of switch arming with none of the disadvantages. In fact, I even set it up so that if the throttle is not zero, it will not arm. And that fixes the clean flight issue where you can have the switch in the armed position and then as soon as you drop the throttle, the copter immediately arms and the motor starts spinning. So let me show you how I set this up. Here's how it's set up and in fact, if you copy this carefully, you may even be able to just replicate this without actually sort of going through all the logic and deeply understanding it. If you decide to copy this without thoroughly understanding how it works, just make sure you test it really thoroughly. There's nothing worse than having a copter arm when you didn't expect it to, or even worse, arming and refusing to disarm and cutting somebody's face off or flying away. and killing a puppy. I don't know. Okay, so just test it thoroughly and make sure it works like you expect it to before you commit to it. But here's what we've got. The first thing that we've got is switch L1 and L1 is true when switch SF, that's my main arming switch, is in the armed position and I hold the momentary switch for 0.6 of a second. You can see the 0.6 there. So if you watch, I've got switch SF in the up position and I'm gonna hold switch SH, the momentary switch, for 0.6 of a second. And you can see switch L1 fired there for a second. If any of that is not true, switch L1 will not fire. Okay, so switch L1 basically says that I've given the command to arm, that's it. Now, what about the throttle? Switch L2 is true whenever the throttle channel is less than negative 99. In other words, whenever the throttle is all the way down. So you can see here, if I raise the throttle, switch L2 goes false, and if I lower the throttle, so basically switch L2 tells me whether the throttle is all the way down or not. And then switch L3 is true when both L1 and L2 are true. So basically whenever I've given the arm command and the throttle is all the way down, switch L3 will become true. And then switch L4 is a sticky version of switch L3. Watch switch L3, I'm gonna give the arm command. Did you see that switch L3 became true very briefly and then went false again? That's how these edge switches work. You can have them be true for a certain amount of time, but you can't have them just stay true forever. That's what a sticky switch is for. So the L4 is a sticky version of switch L3. When L3 fires, switch L4 is triggered and switch L4 stays true. This is the true condition, it's L3. It stays true until switch SF 
enters the disarm condition, and then switch L4 goes off. And if you followed all that, good for you. There's one more thing you need to do in order to make this work, and that is to go to the mixer and set up the mixer to actually give it the output channel value. So for me, channel five or aux one is my arming channel. And what I've done is I've set it up so that when switch L4 is false, it is set to 100, and when switch L4 is true, it's set to negative 100. And basically that just causes the arming state to follow switch L4. And if we just briefly look, you can see, I mean, it should be pretty simple to set that up, but here's how that's set up, just like so. Okay, and then for, for this one, it's the same thing, but here the switch is not L4 instead of L4. Okay, that's it. That is how you set up a sticky arming switch for your Tyrannus. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope it's been educational. Happy flying.